And what do we have going on here for new members? I uh, got a nice little list here. We got Jose Navarro, uh, Jenna Jensen, uh, Larry Connect, and Chris Van Dyke. I wonder if he's related to the Dick Van Dyke. Don't know. Anyway, Chris, welcome. Uh, Kelly Patterson Trevino, and then uh, Fidel Reina, and Terry Green, uh, Dustin Dawes, and Joel Dawkin. I uh, hope I got that right, but uh, we got all these new members here. And as I did say, I had a little bit on uh, some other things. I'm going to get these glasses off because I don't need them all the time. Uh, as my title says, can you handle the heat? Well, the thing is, I wanted to take an address. Can you handle the heat? Because guess what? We got a couple areas, and I'm not just on one subject, but on two separate subjects for the heat. And of course, we're going to start out with, uh, of course, I had a big question on the rear vents on the Ford Edge. And I'm going to tell you all straight up, they're useless. Okay? Uh, the problem is, is you got your central uh, heating area okay and you got the one fan blowing into it and it comes from the uh, passenger side at the blower well it stands to reason folks that vent then goes up and it hits the center then it spider webs out now keep in mind will which vents are going to get the most air the ones that are going to be closest to the uh, where the where the airflow is directed so you got your central air forced into one area and then it has to go to defrost well defrost is probably going to be your most powerful vents okay after that then you got your front vents your side vents and your floor vents now all this air goes out so it stands to reason that you have to direct it with your actuators and the blend doors and everything else but the problem is is the uh, blend doors control a lot of your flow so these down vents okay to go to the back passenger where you got those little heaters that are up in the center console they're not even on the floor uh, they go up and through the console and then they come out through those little vents they have no blend doors there's no way to direct the flow of air to them so the air just like water water goes to the lowest point well guess what those vents are not the lowest point the lowest point is all the closest vents so when you're running your edge and you got it even on full force and directed uh, you're not gonna get much flow back there folks you're just not gonna do it the only way you're gonna get that is like in previous SUVs I had where you have a separate system in the back to actually force the air out through the back vents to supplement it so really what you're doing is you're hoping for some sort of passive uh, airflow going through those tubes because keep in mind those are also the longest reaching tubes so if there's no air to direct you know vent to direct and blend that air down to those vents all the other vents are just gonna suck it out and you won't get it so is there a fix to it unfortunately I don't see because I looked at the diagrams and it is not possible unless you add an extra blower and quite frankly that's way too expensive so uh, that's the answer to your heat and your cooling uh, unfortunately we're just gonna have to live with that and uh, wear snow boots in the winter and flip-flops in the summer I guess uh, otherwise uh, it, there's really no big control and personally speaking my wife puts blankets in the back of the car for the girls uh, but that's a mom thing <laughs> I don't see them being it but anyway heated seats in the back would be good that'd help a little uh, generate a little more heat but as it goes that is how the vents will work for you so I don't see any way that I check the diagrams and again I can't see a way through it now the other one we have Daniel I think it is uh, uh, Rubio Daniel Alejandro Rubio hey Daniel I love that cat phone that thing has that thermal uh, imaging on there and Daniel has been showing us exactly how hot our brakes get and of course the front compared to the rears now I just talking about how you know can you handle the heat now the brake system on the Ford Edge uh, is a very unique system and it's used pretty much around the world for a lot of cars and really it, it's a two function system uh, that works in there so I try to explain it as easy as I can uh, but the system turns on each wheel 
it of course has an analog system so they're all individually controlled in that aspect but here's the one thing you gotta keep in mind uh, which one front or rear turns on first when you hit the brakes well the the scientific answer and how they designed it is the rears will hit first okay uh, reason being is we one we want to maintain control okay and if you hit the fronts too hard uh, that could cause the rear to slide around so you, you want to maintain that straight line emergency stopping so the the rear brakes technically will hit first now if you know anything about your rear brakes you will know that the rear brakes are a solid flat piece of carbon steel or you know pig iron essentially uh, and it's a gray iron it's not steel it's a gray iron you know but what it is it's a flat piece of steel in the back they do not put vented rear rotors on the Ford Edge they are non vented uh, which is a heat issue okay it will build up heat in that aspect so anyway the brakes hit they grab first in the back and the brake caliper on the rear on the Ford Edge is a single piston brake caliper okay so it's not doing a lot of work but then again when the emergency stops occur it doesn't have to because where's all the weight going the weights going to the front. Fronts are dual piston calipers. Yes, two pistons pushing on it. More force. Now the rears hit first, but the fronts will increase the pressure as the brakes applied as it needs to. Okay? So the fronts do a lot of the work. The rears are just along to keep you from sliding one way or the other. So uh, backs hit first, but will you notice it? No, it happens so fast you won't even notice it. But in you know a lot of driving situations the theory is well gee if the rears are always hitting first would the rears wear out first well I'm gonna tell you all from experience and I've got a lot of miles to prove myself my rears don't wear out as fast as my fronts the fronts more than make up for the amount of pressure and the amount of wear when they do activate okay so technically over the years three Ford edges my rear brakes last longer okay even though they're the first to activate but the fronts put more pressure because they're dual caliper or dual piston calipers and they put more effort into it when you start getting to the nitty-gritty for the stopping so they do wear out faster uh, technically uh, I've had brakes go 175 on the fronts and 225,000 miles on the rear and so far my 2011 oh, is staying with that scenario uh, with the uh, uh, high carbon or high ceramic contact pads and then of course the uh, high carbon uh, contact rotor so uh, that's it on your brakes they do get hot and I did some measurements and uh, I don't know if it's due to the ventilation of the front disc but the front disc always seem to be cooler than the rears okay so you know and uh, I think Alejandro or uh, Daniel Alejandro is uh, of course showing that the rears do look a little bit more toastier than the fronts okay uh, but then again I've been doing some measurements at like 10 below 10 degrees 30 degrees so they cool off quick uh, but uh, I've been finding that the rears are about 50 degrees warmer than the fronts when I jump out and measure them real quick so uh, the they do expose themselves to more heat and of course more heat is not good for pads right so you could end up with uh, stress cracks in the pads and technically if you get them too hot and run them too hard I guess you could end up with some stress fractures on your rotors so that's all the more reason to do that maintenance on them rotors and pads and make sure they work good oil them up grease them up de-rust them once a year folks once a year every year take them apart clean them re-grease them and you won't have problems guarantee it okay uh, I do that every year to mine and I have not had a problem with my pads wearing unevenly or anything else if they wear unevenly it's because you're not doing the maintenance that's all there is to it okay so do that maintenance and you of course have it uh, let's see I got Manos listening for the first time one of my live presentations. Uh, I got some. Hey, thanks for the support, Mano. And of course, uh, we got Daniel. Yes, Daniel is, LaRocca is on there watching too. And according to AutoZone, the front is a single too. Uh, well, Daniel LaRocca, LaRica, 
Uh, sorry to say it, watch my videos. They are dual calip or dual piston calipers on the front. At least on the Ford Edge for the uh, 2011 Plus. I don't quite remember the 2008. I'm getting old. I don't remember it. I think somebody is here. Who is that? <laughs> oh, somebody snuck in there. I just saw her face there. Say hi, CB. Hi. Okay. Anyway, uh, I uh, do know for a fact they are dual piston calipers up front because I got to get a dual piston caliper uh, compressor to when I go to do the brakes. So I do that. And uh, of course, uh, we want to make sure that. Uh, you guys understand that when you do it but if you're uncertain uh, take and uh, watch the video and I show fully that they are dual piston calipers up front now you know, I would like to see you know rear ventilated disc on the back that would be great but uh, apparently that is not an option um, as far as everything else goes what are you doing there Okay, I got a I got an assistant today. Okay, uh, for whatever reason, uh, she wants to be part of this whole thing. Uh, but let's go down to the paint thing. Okay, paint front hoods notoriously throughout the history of the Ford Edge, the front hood has been a a bone you know bone of contention as far as paint and finish. Uh, what I do know about paints, folks, is uh, back in the early 80s or 90s or whatever, they switched over from the, uh, the volatile organic compounds. In other words, they switched from the oil-based paints to a water-based paint for all auto body painting. It was a matter of an EPA, OSHA, uh, safety thing, health, and all this other stuff. And, of course... Uh, you, what you really want to pay attention to is now the formulations have changed and it's taken the auto manufacturing industry a long time in conjunction with paint manufacturing to actually get this right and uh, you know sometimes they experiment with thickness of paint and sometimes it's uh, the metal is uh, of course primed and prepped and uh, that does make a big difference to what happens but the early Ford edges the first gens are having a big problem with their front hoods as we folded by Rochelle Miller uh, on the Facebook group and uh, you know unfortunately once it starts the way it's manufactured it gets up underneath in those seams uh, the only choice is to replace the hood uh, any repairs you do to it are just going to show up later on. So uh, I'm sure your body shop would tell you that. So you will have to replace the hood. Uh, fortunately, though, I haven't been seeing a whole lot of rust on any other panels. It just seems to be mostly the hood, but others do it. I traded in my 2008 Ford Edge with nearly 300,000 miles on it, and the hood had no rust. Uh, you know, go figure. The used car folks thought for sure it was a rust bucket, but they were they were surprised that it had no rust. Now, how does my car rust? You drive it, you set it in the driveway or the garage, soaking wet from driving in the winter, and it just sits there and soaks in its own juices, and then it stays wet because why? It's not drying. Uh, that's what causes the rust, folks. Why do my cars not rust, the ones I drive? Because when it does get wet, I drive it until it's dry practically. Okay, sometimes I park it and it's still wet. Uh, but I get up right away in the morning again, it's on the road getting dried again and washed and hit by rain and everything else. Uh, nothing can sit on it for a long time. Uh, I power wash it driving hundreds of thousands of miles through rainstorms. It's always getting a rinse of some sort. Uh, so... Uh, you know, I just don't have a rust problem. I have wear out problem for parts, but not a rust problem. Uh, you can try to protect your paints as well as you can, and there's a lot of good products. I'm not an auto detailer, so I'm not going to get into, you know, clay bar. And quite frankly, I wash it through a car wash and then I move on. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just not the guy to ask about detailing a car. I, I use it and I rinse it off once in a while. But uh, that, that's it for the car hood, folks. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a fact of life. When you live up north in the Salt Belt area, uh, you, you know, rust is rust. And at that point, you just keep driving it and keep moving. Depends if you want to spend money on it. Personally, I wouldn't. I'd just drive it. 
maybe eventually find one from a junkyard and paint it or something, but that'd be about it. Uh, as far as anything else that's going on, uh, we got Tyler Stover, of course, he went out and he shared the part number for his new uh, windshield washer nozzle thingy that he must have uh, broken off, scraping ice or snow off of the hood or something, I don't know. I don't know how those things get broke. They get old, they get broke, so... He at least shared that with us, so we do have that. Other good news, Ford's new SmartLink OBD accessory. Now, I did stop by the Ford dealer today, and I was there for another reason. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was uh, asking them about that, and uh, they really don't know much about it either. I don't know why the dealerships are really never up on it, uh, but... Uh, they, there's a couple of them that seem to be more knowledgeable on it and uh, you know trying to be aware of what was going on and uh, it, it's still in its infancy stages folks but I am willing to say that uh, this smart link stop this smart link is uh, you know you gotta love your seven year old to death don't you do you, do you gotta love them Yes. Yes, you gotta love seven year olds. All right. So anyway, apparently she has nothing to do other than come down with dad, right? Yeah. Okay. Is a, a is a Ford Edge a good car? Yes. Yes. Do you want to drive a Ford Edge when you get older? Yes, but dad. What? Come here. What do you do when your computer turns sideways when you're playing? Turn sideways. Yeah, turn sideways. Then you me. then you stop playing because you broke it. I'll have to fix it later. Okay, okay I'll talk to you later. <laughs> She's down here because her computer stopped working. <laughs> That's the only reason. Uh, anyway, uh, back where I was at. Where was I? Holy cow! Uh, the the OBD accessory. Um, that. I'm not so certain, folks. It's it's really what we're all thinking it is. Uh, it's going to be a smart link. It's going to connect through Wi-Fi through your phone uh, and be sent out and stuff like that. But there's some thing, folks on there jumping to the conclusion that s somehow, miraculously, this device is going to turn your car into a remote start by the phone. Uh, I'm going to tell you it's probably not going to happen unless you had the hardware installed and the electrical uh, stuff installed in your edge with a remote start system in it. I don't see how this device is going to you know, access your OBD2 and turn it into a magical uh, remote start. I don't see that happening. They'll probably sell something like the remote start system to go with it. So just keep in mind. They may price this lower. They will offer optional accessories, plug and play, to help you out in reducing the weight of your pocketbook. <laughs> I can guarantee that. Okay, so uh, we have uh, basically all sorts of uh, issues that are going with that, and we will find out in due time. But it does offer some of the older Ford Edge owners a the ability to to get some more uh, additional technology included in with their edge and I think that's a good thing for uh, everybody so we can have something to uh, actually do while we're working on the Ford Edge now as far as uh, going with anything else that we are working on we got let's see uh, Dan Dan Barnhoff uh, he's Got a 2007 Ford Edge, 107,000 miles with a P0020 fault code, which is, of course, the cam position sensor code, but that is not the problem. It is the variable cam timing solenoid that ca causes the cam position, of course, to sign. And even the P002 in the books refers you back to the VCT as the main root of the problem. Now, your VCT, I think I've covered this before, is, of course, going to fail not because of electronics, folks. Generally, it's not elect electrical. Uh, why does it fail? It fails because you don't change the oil. That's it. Don't change the oil. You let it go. 
okay what happens is is those little screens in that VCT get clogged up with all sorts of gook varnish and everything else and eventually when the screen gets clogged what happens you don't get oil pressure when you don't get oil pressure the VCT cannot operate okay all the more reason folks that you should not be running conventional oil because that will definitely cause your VCT to go bad because it sludges up so much faster and even the synthetic blends are not a good choice because it will eventually cause it to sludge up and of course then you'll have a VCT screen that is garbaged up too also not changing your oil okay now if you're one that's running sin blend all the way up to 10,000 miles you're probably asking for it too uh, but you do want to do is make sure you do and I do recommend a full synthetic oil I don't care what brand you buy but buy something that is a full synthetic and a true synthetic yes a true synthetic do not buy some of these things that are derived from other oils but uh, of course do uh, change your oil more frequently and of course then that will help the VCT operate better so generally if you got a VCT problem it could be more or less inherently related to the oil you use and the frequency you change the oil uh, not saying that it is always a hundred percent that way but uh, for the most part it's going to do that and if you have a water pump failure you might as well change those bad boys out too because they're not going to work very good with all the oil and minerals and everything else running through those screens uh, you're better off changing those when you change that pump so uh, that is pretty much it as far as what we got going on there and you change that VCT Daniel I think you'll have a good thing going on there let's see we've got all sorts of other things folks posting news articles and everything here uh, Mitchell Beck uh, just discovered he has a pencil sharpener installed in the console wait that's not a pencil sharpener <laughs> it's a line in jack and for you folks that do not know how to use that you plug the line in from your phone to that and it requires two male plugs you plug it in then you go on to your dash and then you got all these little selections you select auxiliary yes you put it on the auxiliary function on your for your band selection and then you punch that and then you turn on your device that you have the music on and uh, of course then turn up the volume and rock out I hear man oh he what was man will rock out to I, I, I could have swore I heard him listening to cheap uh, I don't know what was that Barry Manilow was that what you listen to Manilow? Nah, I don't know what he's listening to. <laughs> but anyway, I can just imagine him listening to something. He's probably in there rocking out you know, to acid rock or something. But anyway, uh, we got that, and of course, I am working on my uh, new rebuild. As for far, <laughs> if Mano says no, 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 Manilow. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's see, we got uh, all sorts of other things, PTUs being drilled and access. Hey, good news, I did talk to my uh, local Ford dealer, and I'm trying to work out a deal with them. I'm going to get a meeting with them. I'm going to see if they can't do like Levittown Ford, and if I can convince them to uh, participate with me in offering parts at a cheaper rate. Uh, for folks and uh, assistance and looking stuff up. We'll see what they say. But I did find out and ask the service uh, technicians. Uh, my Ford dealership that I bought my Ford Edge from, uh, I asked them about the PTU and they do a PTU fluid change. They recommend it every 30,000 miles and guess what they use for their products? Anybody? Type in what you guess they use it on. Yeah, they use BG products, okay, for all their PTU services, and they will suck it out through the fill hole, and they will then, with a, with their pumps, and then they will refill it with BG product. Yes, so they do perform that service. So ask your Ford dealer what they do. If they do the BG service, then you know you're getting something good in that aspect too. Uh, I was surprised mildly that they do do that, uh, but they said, yeah, but they don't drill holes, folks. They won't drill and tap the uh, PTU casing. Uh, if you do it and they find out you did it, 
then they'll probably be even happier because it makes their job easier. And they can still charge you the same amount of money, even though you just made it easier. So, but uh, at least we do know that the dealership, at least mine, is starting to uh, understand that the PTU needs to be serviced. And, uh, and of course, I'm working with them for some other things. But I'm just trying to make, make it so we can have more services, more, more abilities to get parts and other things on the, on the Facebook page. And that's really what I'm trying to aim for. So uh, we're going that route. Now, Dan, Dan's been pretty active on the page here. Dan, do you even have a job? I don't know. He's been up here, but you know what? If you ever want Dan to mail anything to you, don't have him do it, okay? Uh, yeah, if he does, the, the expect it not to show up. Because apparently Dan has the world's worst luck at mailing oil samples. I mean, he mails them, and they go into the black hole of the United States Postal Service, never to be seen again. Uh, I don't know. How long are you working on this, Dan? For what, a month? They lost it. That's all there is to it. They lost it. They thought it was hazardous material. They took it and called up a safety clean. They did the hazardous material work and they incinerated your sample. <laughs> they just don't want to tell you that's what they did. Anyway, uh, I hope it gets there. But Dan, next time, just drive to Indiana and deliver it. It'd be cheaper. It's faster, actually. Uh, so, uh, I, gosh, I hope that gets there. Uh, yeah, I'm just having fun. Uh, we got a lot of, okay. Oh, boy. I don't even know if I want to touch this one with a 10-foot pole. Halogen, HID, and LED. Hmm. Okay, everybody has an opinion. Now, I do want you all to remember one thing. Be nice to each other, okay? Uh, we all know what the jury says and what the, the verdict is on, on lighting. Uh, yes, halogen is really not a good lighting compared to what's available. Unfortunately, you can take what's available and put it in things that really are not designed for it, okay? Did I do that? Yes, okay? Uh, but technically, I do have shutters. I can cut the light out at the... And the lenses will stray some light out, but it's not near as bad as putting it in, in a first-gen reflector and just going everywhere. Okay, so you know that being said, okay, I have uh, HID lighting in my wife's edge, and it is OEM HID. I like it better. I really do. But I also like the fact that I did do the change over to HID lighting in my Ford Edge, even though it's a halogen projector. I still have the shutters, and I think it is far more acceptable in that aspect that I did that. And I did not go to the high, you know, 6K lighting. I stayed at a 5K, kept it down, kept it to a white light, and, and made it usable, okay? But... If I had the money, I'd go do a full projector, but it's just not worth it with the miles I drive because, you know, I'm not going to trash the car anyway. But as far as uh, LED lighting, everybody, HID lighting started out way back, right? All the infancy, it's been around for a while. It has proven itself, and it has gotten to the point where it's fully acceptable. LED lighting is in its infancy, okay? There is... It, just in the last few years, there have been so many changes for the how how they're heated and, you know, or cooled because they generate so much heat. How the light is dispersed, how the bulbs are designed, uh, wattage, everything is changing, folks. So if you buy LED lighting right now, you are buying experimental lighting. It, that's all there is to it. it. You know what you buy now is not going to be available in six months to twelve months. Uh, so everything is fluid right now for LED lighting. Will they get it right? Will they figure out how to cool it better? Will they make it more efficient? You betcha they will, okay? Because that's where it's going. LED lighting is where it's going. Even the HID lighting will fall to the wayside. And so just keep in mind, uh, when folks are talking about it, you know, some are talking about light dispersion. We're really getting down to technical aspects. Nobody wants to be blinded while they're driving, okay? So, so use due diligence.
diligence when you install it make sure that it is acceptable and just keep in mind your idea of acceptable may not be the other person's idea of acceptable okay but the true thing is is courtesy on the road just make sure you don't do it and I will tell you all I will not you know tell you to go ahead and do this like put HIDs in a reflector case uh, for a Gen 1. You know, mostly I don't want to be responsible for saying do it and then you get a ticket and you're like, Bill, why'd you tell me to do that? No, I'm not going to do that. So, uh, you know, I'm going to say do what is legally available, okay, and works legally, okay. If you do something that's outside of the box, then you're going to pay for the ticket if you get stopped okay so just keep that in mind you might say hey I want more light but you know what maybe you have to go to it in a different way maybe you have to buy all new headlight housings I don't know but you do want to make sure that you do it the right way so uh, that that's my part on the subject and I just want everybody to be courtesy you know have a courtesy towards each other but explain this is why okay uh, this page is an education page. It is not meant to degrade anybody. Uh, so we all make mistakes, we all learn, and we all gain experience. And that's really what I want. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind when we're discussing it. Uh, show pictures, display evidence, facts. That makes an argument really good, don't it? Yeah. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. In your heart, if you know it's wrong, but you still want it, then, you know, we all take personal risks in our daily lives. Just understand that sometimes you got to think about what risk am I taking and what risk am I giving others by doing it. Okay? And that goes with my job all the time. What are your actions and what are the reactions of the others as far as how did I affect them by doing this? Did I make it more dangerous for them? Because I'm blinded and can't see as I'm heading down the road towards you. So uh, just keep that in mind. Courtesy goes a long way. Then you don't get uh, what do you call the, the what do you call those road rage guys going after you, causing all sorts of hate and discontent. Uh, but I do like the fact we got lots of participants. Uh, you know more so than I've had before. And uh, of course that's uh, just moving right along. I don't want to be too much longer. Uh, Kevin Mesner, okay, uh, he's doing his. Uh, uh, ball joint and uh, on his LCA and uh, if you guys hold on just a minute I told you guys I kept a stock of these LCA's I'm gonna go get it look at that look at that see that yes not lying I keep them on hand why cuz they wear out yes this is a Moog okay 70 bucks this is the LCA okay I have it on hand I keep it on hand and I got another one there too but uh, they're they're pretty cheap you can buy the ball joint itself for 25 bucks but why not why not get some new uh, bushings installed give you a better ride that way you can actually take and just install the whole thing but I will say as far as Kevin get those new bolts you got two horizontal bolts uh, they're big ones go up to the front get those new and then the two that go into the clamp get those new too for each side trust me otherwise if you watch my video if you see me using a sawzall that's because I reuse the bolts yes so next time they don't come off you gotta saw them off because they break off and that's why you get the new bolts it's always better to work with new hardware anyway but uh, yeah uh, quotes Ford dealer two hundred and some dollars if you want to buy it from Ford OEM otherwise you buy the Moog part through Amazon eBay or Rock Auto you can get that thing for sixty eight bucks seventy five bucks something like that depending on who you buy it from so Moog I've tested them I've used them and yes they do wear out just like the OEMs wore out they wear out then you replace them uh, but uh, I'm not going to spend two hundred dollars on it because quite, quite frankly if I spend seventy bucks on it I'd have to go through three of them before I got to the price of the one OEM Ford one okay so that's basically where we're at on that uh, and I do want to make sure you guys know that I do have parts on hand and I do have tons of other parts on hand too so uh, you know I'm getting ready to do a major job on my Ford Edge 
But uh, let's see, we got anything else? Uh, Stephen Aston has figured out how to do some sort of a add-on to his uh, first gen Ford Edge by adding a backup camera uh, to his uh, OEM uh, display. Uh, not quite sure how that all works. I'm not a, not into that too terribly much, but uh, he's been explaining it. So you know, you guys go ahead and get on Facebook there and ask him about that. And then uh, last but not least, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't want to draw this out too much further, but I do wish you all a great day, a happy weekend. I may not put out a video this weekend. I'm still debating what I want to do. I got a ton of other things to do and uh you know some and I have not missed a weekend yet in a long long time. And some weeks I've even put out two or three. So, uh bear with me if I don't put a video out. I just have you know, my I got my real job I got to take care of first and uh take care of that stuff and uh, then of course birthday parties and my daughter uh, Mercy Girl uh, went to the Art Academy uh, interview today it was over an hour long and she is trying to get into the uh, Davenport Creative Arts Academy uh, for her high school years and it's a big long interview process it's very competitive so I'm hoping you guys wish her the best of luck in getting into it uh, she's the apple of my eye right always daddy's eye and of course I do want her to be successful so uh, you know thanks for the support man oh I appreciate that too and all the rest of you but uh, this is Mac T Bill otherwise known as and I do want you all to know my feet hit the floor today and I'm having a great day I want you to have a great day too. Talk to y'all later.